You know it's gonna be a good day when FedEx shows up with detailing stuff and I have to roll it in because the box is so big. <laughs> Matt's freaking out right now. Really heavy. Oh, I'm pumped. My friend Matt is actually the person who led me on to Adam's products and uh, after I started using their stuff in the videos, they actually reached out to me and they've been sending me free products. So, this so this is amazing. Yes. Like, I cannot say how much I appreciate this stuff. They have a lot of cool stuff too, like the limited edition detail sprays. So good. You can literally drink it. I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I do it right now I, for the video. I, I dare you. Yeah. Should I? Just put a little bit on your tongue. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Dude, why would you do that? It tastes like fucking spice, bro. It's not bad, actually. I could drink that. This is the stuff that we use the most often, obviously, for foaming down and washing the cars. Detail spray is amazing, and then wheel cleaner we use a ton of. Yes. Tire shine we started using more. I used to not be the biggest fan of tire shine, but um, I realized if you wipe it off, you can actually make yeah, it look a little like more. A, like a not like a wet, looks like a, like a dry kind of new tire look, so it's not like splattering everywhere and stuff. So it's really good. I, use all I think cars. Nicole's car has it on yeah, it right exactly now. Right here. This. It helps when you have a fatter tire so it doesn't make it look so weird. Yeah. No joke at all, Matt literally has used this stuff as cologne no, before. One day I was smelling not too good and uh, went in my trunk and I was like, you're good now. So I'm stoked on that. True story. This is my current supply of Adam's stuff in my little Adam's empty. cabinet. Literally yeah. everything. We're, uh, we're a little bit low. It's almost a year since we got stuff. Yeah, so. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm not too sure that I've shown this stuff to you guys yet but I laid out all the parts and pieces that I'm going to need for doing the Z32 handbrake setup on Nicole's car. Um, I've never really worked with a setup like this, so it does look like it's gonna be rather confusing with all the springs and little pieces, um, but there are some diagrams online, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to figure it out. In addition to that stuff, I also have a new master for her car that should make the Z32 brakes feel a lot better. So that's something else that I'm gonna do while I'm at it, but I've been having an issue because I really am procrastinating doing this since I don't know what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do that I do sometimes, and I don't really tell you guys, I guess, or maybe I have in the past, I'll just try to knock out one side first without filming, that way I can kind of figure out what I'm doing and then I can get it done way faster when I go to film it and actually talk about stuff like I know what I'm talking about. I'm a YouTube fake. So this is by far probably the most difficult thing I've ever done on a car before. All for a working handbrake. Now if you come over here, I think I got this side set up to where it would be working. Now essentially what this does is when you pull the handbrake, these shoes expand and they grab the inside of the rotor and that's the parking brake. Do you really need a parking brake? Probably not, but I had the parts because uh, when I bought the R32 calipers, the person sent it with me, so I wanted to try it. And Speed Academy has a really cool write-up that gave me confidence to try to attack this myself. However, once I started doing it, I realized that it was lacking a lot of information in really confusing parts. And I can't really find anything online about it, and that's why it was probably one of the most difficult things I've done. So I'm gonna try to document everything like really specifically, so in case you're trying to do this, which I don't recommend by any means, you'll have a better idea than I had. As you can see, I already removed the crusty caliper and crusty rotor. That's pretty self-explanatory, just two bolts. Remove the line, I already have the G32 conversion line, it's simple. So, First thing we have to do, unfortunately, you have to take the hubs off in order to get the backing plate on. And super unfortunately, you can't get access to the bolts back here because of the axles. So I guess you could remove the axles, but I think it's easier to just unbolt the parts to the knuckle. I will save you the trouble of figuring out what size this nut is, because I figured out that I didn't have the socket. So get a 36 mil socket before you even try to start this, because you're gonna need it. 19 millimeter here, here, here. And at the bottom of the coilover, I think that's a 17, I don't remember. Those have to come off. Ah! Now we can fold this down. We need a little bit of persuasion. All right, so we can fold this down now. Might need to push the axle out a little bit. Really tedious just for parking brakes, right? Yeah. I know. Why did I do it? I don't know. Um, maybe because I like a challenge? Maybe because I didn't know it would suck this much? I don't know. I don't do this often. So the rotor ends up sitting like this. This is like a dust shield, and dust shields are lame. So we're gonna use some quality shears, and we're gonna actually cut it. Believe it or not, this is strong enough to cut it, so we can just kind of go around this edge like this. And cut it right off. Check out those quality cuts, quality goods. All right, so we got a exposed edge now. So we'll head over to the spray booth. Come on over here next to the GT350. Where's my quality paint? So we'll clean out my spray gun. And we'll head over to the booth. 
and we'll clean up the edge just so. Wait, 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 wait. What? Where's your mask? Oh, I. Sorry. <laughs> now I'm gonna end up smearing all this with my hands anyway. I just do this to make it look like I try. So that way we don't have any exposed metal. Um, and it, it coats the car with a nice coat of overspray. It makes it last longer. It's like a ceramic coating, but it's a paint. Back to here, back to here. So uh, if you're lucky, this will just come right apart. Be careful of that washer, because that's important. That is important. All right, so uh, this is where the shield goes. But you might be stupid like me, because there's no write-ups about this, and forget that there's a piece that needs to go here first. So we're going to go get that. Probably doesn't make any sense, but for whatever reason, I put grease on this on the other side. And it made it a lot easier to go in because it was just binding a lot and it was making it really tough. So we'll lube it up a little bit. Um, it's very confusing kind of what stuff goes on which side because the diagrams don't really specify. But it does say L for left along with on the dust shield and the uh, like writing goes on top. So this needs to go in like kind of sandwich through this. And it's going to want to keep spinning which is annoying but so that kind of ends up going like that. But. It's kind of tough, so we'll get, we'll persuade it a little. Persuasion, persuasion. It can be a bit of a challenge, but you want to try to make sure this thing stays level while you're tightening it all down. No, oh, stupid. Okay, now this is a super tricky part because before I tried to figure out this whole assembly thing, not knowing anything about it with the actual hub on. So I'm gonna leave the hub off. I don't know if I'll be able to actually fit it on after I have everything assembled, but at least for like information purposes, it'll give you a better idea of how everything kind of pieces together in place. I'm gonna put a link over to the Speed Academy write up on this whole thing because they have a really good picture that illustrates all the little parts and pieces. If you don't have any, you're screwed, so make sure you have them. Um, I don't know if this is the right order to do it because there's no information about it out there. But uh, what I started working with first was the easiest thing I could decipher. The easiest thing I was able to figure out was to start with this little rod thingy, this little plate thingy, and this little spring thingy. So they stack to form this little thingy. And uh, you're gonna take the shoe that has the arm and it's gonna go towards the back of the car because this is where the actual cable's gonna go. The cable's gonna come through here and go into this. So the way that this works, it kind of like pushes in through the middle hole, goes into the slot, you kind of push, and then turn and it locks itself in place. Simple. Well, it's easy since last time we did this at the wrong time. I'll try to get the cable in there. I'm gonna show you guys how we have the cable routed afterwards because I'm still not positive if how we did it is gonna work. So I've come through there. There's a little nut that's gonna go on the back of this. If you've ever worked on a bicycle before, same deal. But the handbrake cable kind of goes in and gets pulled and stuff. And the spring kind of seats in here and the pressure will just kind of hold it in place. So what that essentially does is it pulls this thing and somehow a bunch of magical powers make this thing expand and make you do rad skits. Side number two goes on. Here I am hoping that uh, I'll have to take all this stuff off and this actually works, but you know what? Do it for the video. I almost missed this step the first time. This thingy goes in here and it's gonna get like wedged together by this. So we're gonna like kind of get it resting in place because really hard to do after the fact. All right, never mind. It took me a little while to figure out how these springs work. They basically like hook in here. Oh, we can't forget the little captain hat. <laughs> little captain hat goes on first. Now these springs are like super reckless, so I recommend that you wear some sort of eyewear. I should definitely be wearing some eyewear myself. So the springs basically Kind of tough to get on. All right, got her on. This captain hat needs to sit like this. And then the other spring is gonna basically mirror this one except come from this hole. The bear trap god goes in there. Bear trap god looks like he's a little loose. Wow, this looks so much easier when you don't have like the hub in your way. Yeah. I wonder if this is the way you're supposed to All do it. A lot less time too. Okay, bear trap god looks a little loose. Siamese twin cone head goes on the bottom and this is basically your adjuster. So this will expand it or contract it. So you just kind of end up spinning this knob. So Siamese cone head is kind of tricky to get in. You have to kind of wedge them in there. So we'll close them down and then Siamese twin cone head will go like this. And then he's so stoked to be in Nicole's car. All right, look at that, Siamese cone head in the house. 
Something looks a little off about him though. He looks a little off-centered. The Siamese cone head actually goes in like this with the adjuster in back. And then it just kind of sandwiches together between the two shoes. Look at that. That does not look right. What's going on up here? <laughs> this side took maybe a fifth of the time as the other side because I realized that the hub will fit through this. So you can do all the like confusing stuff first. And I just want to like, Matt, can you just get like a really clear shot of this and just kind of like move around? So if anyone's confused about any of the little parts and pieces, you can kind of see what goes where. Pay careful attention to what direction things are facing like this, the little arm, the little captain hat up here, and hopefully that'll help you guys. But I hope none of you ever try to do this ever in your life because it's not worth it and you should just live without a parking brake because it's perfectly fine putting your car in gear because I said so. Hooray, we can tighten the bolts now. Ow. Before I go tightening anything down, I'm gonna slide this on and make sure everything seems to be working in the normal fashion. So it sounds like it's grabbing a little bit, so I can loosen it. So I'm taking the screwdriver, move this out of the way a little bit. I've been touching a lot of this stuff with uh, my hands that are really greasy. Check out my sick brake cleaner. It doesn't even work. Come on, just give me a little bit. I need just a little bit. But uh, no, it's really important just not to have like grease and stuff, otherwise they won't really work well. So everything like knock on wood seems to work. So it's just bolting a few things up now and then I'll show you guys the setup that we had underneath the car for the e-brake lines and we should be chilling. So this is the part I'm really proud of. These are uh, Z32 handbrake lines and the way that it worked, these weren't really lining up with here and I was scratching my head, I couldn't get everything to line up. So I actually took these pieces from my simulator that are just basically brackets with a bunch of holes and I used it to relocate it and now it's the perfect length for the perfect adjustment. Um, the only issue I have right now is they are gonna kind of bend down because it's so thin. So what I think I'm going to do is like flip these upside down so I can have the second hole in here, which will give it a little bit more stability. Plus I'm gonna like double them up and hopefully that'll help hold. Otherwise I'm sure I could have Alberto like fab something more permanent up, but I'm really like proud that this works. And then they just kind of go around here and they go to the brakes. Got to slide the uh, drive shaft back in, but I'm gonna wait, because if you look over here, I'm pretty sure I've talked about how the fact I need another shifter gasket. I have another shifter gasket, and it'll be way easier to tilt the transmission back while I have the drive shaft out, so I can clean all that up. Right. Our friend Kat, AKA the hippie that was in my day in the life from forever ago, is playing at a coffee bar uh, down over in Waterford Lake. So we're gonna head over there and watch her. And I think I'm gonna finish up on the rest of the brakes on Nicole's car tomorrow. All I really have left to do is the actual caliper itself, which is easy. What? <laughs> no. Are you sure you responded to that? Yeah, it's on the bed. And I also have to regasket her transmission. But other than that, we're looking good. Pete, the new shirt, by the way. These and a bunch of other cool new ones are actually out now. I will show you those in a little bit though because we gotta go. I think we'll take the GT350. It's been a while. <laughs> nice shoes, Nicole. Thank you. We were followed by a cop literally entire way here. He was just waiting to pull us over. He probably looked up on his little computer and be like, he just got pulled over the other day. I'll let him slide. We were speeding, but like it's a Mustang. Actually a Shelby. We don't like to use that word, but cops like to pull this car over is something that I've learned. She's gotta be good to pull a crowd this big when you know it's 11 p.m. Who's gonna drink coffee at 11 p.m.? It's a, it's a social gathering for them hipsters. All right. All right, you just made it sound way less cool, Nicole. Nicole's just sitting here staring at her through the window and she hasn't looked to see Nicole yet. This is, this is a good seating right here. Not real, man.
can show you guys the new stuff. So in addition to this tee, which is very subtle, very simple, um, we actually printed on a different type of t-shirt. So these are extremely soft. They're also not 100% cotton. They're some sort of blend. I'll put it on the screen because I'm not certain what is off the top of my head, but they fit really, really well. We also did more of the hoodies that were really popular, this time on a really cool gray fabric that I don't know, it's just a little different, I like it. We've got the black and cream with the upside down triangle, which by the way is probably one of my favorite designs we've had over the past year. I think I might put it on the back windshield of my 240, let me know what you guys think of that in the comment section. And last but not least, we have this one, just a really clean looking front graphic. If you're interested in picking up any of that stuff, just go to lzmfg.com, but I recommend you do it sooner than later because Sunday we are going to Mystery Meet 5 and we're gonna bring all the new stuff as well as older designs too. And from what we've been told, these events have the craziest turnouts. Like last time there were 50,000 people and I guess a lot of people buy stuff from vendors. So we're predicting that we'll probably sell out of whatever we bring. Well, we're not predicting, we're just hoping cause that'd be really rad. Anyway, um, go to the site if you're interested in any of this stuff. And uh, if you're local, come to Mystery Meet. It'll be sick. We're gonna bring the 240s, we're gonna bring the mini, and we're gonna bring the GT350. And we'll have a full tent with merch and everything. We got a new tent design and everything. Should be really rad. Tomorrow I will get Nicole's car sorted. I know this doesn't really appeal to like a mass audience, but I know there were a few people asking questions about the Z32 like rear handbrake setup. If you have any specific questions that I didn't really cover well in this video, I can address it in tomorrow's video. So please feel free to uh, address that in the comments and I'll help you out. Nicole, as for your car, what do you think of that blurple color I showed you, the one that Trevor did that valve cover in? Do they know what color you're talking about? It's on the screen right now. No, oh, that might be a winner. So we're gonna we're gonna redo the poll because but, I think what the but true what test is that we can find matching vans because I have the fuchsia vans but we gotta find them blurple vans. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna redo the poll because I feel like the blurple that we had isn't as cool as this blurple. Magenta is still really sick, but I want to see what you guys think. There's pros and cons. Like the blurple is really cool. I feel like it's a really nice deep color, but it's also kind of similar to Nicole's car. Magenta is really cool too. I don't know. I want to hear what you guys have to say. So that poll will be on the screen right now. Make sure you drop a thumbs up. Why do we say drop? Like you can't drop a thumbs up on the ground. What would happen? I don't know. Well, we'll see you tomorrow guys. And remember, if you're a bad boy, I'm going to come clean up your ass.